All right, Miss Ann, I think we're good to go. The camera's rolling. And we're looking forward to hearing from you this morning. Please share with us what God's put on your heart. Thank you, Pastor. There's a phrase that has intrigued me for many years that you read in the Bible. Two words, in captivity. Um, and in studying, actually the word ca captivity is used 124 times in the Bible, so it must have some kind of meaning, hasn't it? Yes. And I have studied, um, tried to study, and I find three reasons for being in captivity. And I want to just mention those three reasons. The first reason, um, we see this in the Old Testament, God's people went in, into captivity because of their own sins. They would not listen to God. Uh, they had no heart to obey God. I think Ezekiel the eighth chapter is a very interesting chapter to read. Um, I just want to kind of describe the conversation that God had with Ezekiel. Um, his people now have been sent into captivity, or he warned them they would be sent into captivity because they would not listen to him or want to obey him. And so he talks to Ezekiel and he says, Ezekiel, I want to give you a vision. I want to show you what's going on in my house of worship. And um, the first thing that Ezekiel sees as he goes uh, up to the house of God, to the temple, is he sees an idol, a statue of an idol right there, provoking God to jealousy. And God, it's almost like God is saying to Ezekiel, can you believe this? Mm. Right at my house? Um, and you haven't seen anything yet. Let's go further. And so they walked into um, the temple, and on the wall were engraved um, pictures of uh, all kind of creeping things, beasts, and uh, there were 70 leaders that represented the people. Uh, they were worshiping those. They were worshiping those idols that were engraved. Now this is in the house of God. Mm -hmm. And um, then he went a little further and he saw women that were weeping for a god. It's believed it was the god of vegetation. And um, so when the plants were blooming, there was no need to uh, mourn or cry for this god. But when winter came and the plants left, uh, they thought maybe he had gone underground. And so they, mo they mourned and cried and wanted him to come back. What idolatry, yes. what lies they were believing in the house of God. And then it seemed like there were 25 priests. They were worshiping the sun that's up in heaven, the S-U-N, instead of the S-O-N, the Son of God. Mm. And um, I believe that this, this type of lifestyle results in degrading lives and the destroying of a culture. And um, you might say, well, um, we, we're, not, we're not doing things like that today. But I was just reading in Second Timothy, uh, God said that you are a people that you love yourself more than you love me. Um, you're greedy and you have no fear of me, no reverence for me, and no heart to see what I have in my word. You just want to do your own thing. So uh, we can't say those people were any worse than we are today. That's right. And God had sent his people into captivity for that kind of lifestyle. Uh, I think that's a warning to America. Mm. And, um, but God was waiting for repentance and faith. Well, the second reason to be in captivity, the first reason we saw was because of our own sin. The second reason to be in captivity, remember Joseph? Joseph was in captivity, and he was in captivity for doing what is right. So we have to remember this. And uh, he was in prison for 13 years for doing something that uh, it was just a lie. It, he had not done that. And then he was forgotten in prison for two years. I remember the day that I read in Psalm 105, it said that God sent a man before them and he um, 
was tried by the word of God until the time came for the word of God to be fulfilled. That is a good principle for us as Christians to remember. God will give us the truth and we will be tried by that truth until it is time for God to fulfill that truth. Mm. And so Joseph was in captivity just for doing what is right. Well, and then we all are familiar with Job. Job was in captivity because God wanted to teach Job truths about himself, about God himself. And then he saw that Job had things in his heart and life that were uh, harming jo uh, Job, hurtful to Job. Now, we need to stop and listen to this because we all have, as a believer, we have things that are harmful in our life that sometimes we don't even see and we need for God to uh, be able to show us these things. Actually, Job did not see that he was a proud man and that he was a self-righteous man. I mean, God said a lot of good compliments about Job, mm -hmm. but when you read the last few chapters of the book of Job and God is really talking to Job and Job is listening, God's letting him know, Job, you are self-righteous mm. and you are a proud man mm. and these are, are hurting your life. So we can be in captivity as a Christian because God is wanting to teach us about himself, wonderful truths about himself and then things that are in our life that are hurting us. May, may we as believers have a heart to want to learn that. Well, I love it. It's, <laughs> I love what the Lord says in the last chapter of Job. He says to Job, uh, or it says about what God did to Job. After he said to Job, Job, I want you to pray for those three friends. Right. Now, if you're familiar with Job, you know those that they stayed there with him uh, and stayed silent for seven days, but then when they opened their mouth, oh, what they did say. Mm. And uh, they condemned Job and they hurt Job. They really weren't friends. They did not love at all times. And uh, so of all things, God said to Job, Job, pray for those three friends. Now, to me, that would be kind of hard to pray for three people that had um, not been a very good help to me. Right. But Job had learned some things about his own heart, and he knew, I need to listen to God. So it says in the last chapter of Job that God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for those friends. That teaches me that I need to be listening at all times when God tells me to do something, to be willing to do it by the power of God. And then I love what God says uh, about restoring and giving him twice as much. And he gave him three daughters. And God doesn't waste words. He tells us the names of those three girls. It's so, it is so encouraging to me to hear what the three names mean. The first daughter, her name, and I won't even try to pronounce their names, but the meaning of their name, the first uh, daughter, her name meant the will of God or peace. Job finally had peace. He was doing the will of God. Mm. He was doing what God was telling him to do. And the second girl mean, means, her name means healing or refreshing. Amen. Oh, when we're doing the will of God, how re refreshing and um, healing it is too. And then the third girl's name meant joy or fulfillment. God will bring complete fulfillment in our life when we will listen to him. So the three reasons for captivity, doing, doing our own sins and not listening to God, sometimes just for doing right, mm -hmm. that God wants to use us, that we'll be an example. And by the way, I didn't mention, but you don't hear Joseph complaining during those years. Right. You just hear him, uh, you hear him wanting to help and serve. And that's amazing to me. And then the third reason um, is because God, like Job, wants to teach us about himself or things that are in our, in our life. Uh, people see things in our life that we don't, and God wants us to see them. Um, if you think or you 
feel like you're going through, and you're a believer now, you know the Lord Jesus, if, if you feel like you're in an experience of captivity now and you're trying to see what's going on, Lord, I do want us to just to turn to 2 Corinthians, and I want to take time to read these verses. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, this can cause us to be in captivity. The Lord lets us know you are in a war. When you um, are a Christian, you are in a war, but it's not a war with flesh and blood. Listen what God says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull down the strongholds. We have strongholds in our life, and a stronghold is a thought or an action that is not pleasing to God. And we need to be able, by the Spirit's help, to see that. And God says, I have given you something that is like dynamite that can pull down that stronghold. The fifth chapter, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That was one of your daddy's favorite verses in the whole Bible. Okay. He saw the need that our mind, um, well, I heard someone say this. This is how we, we, we do. Me, myself, and I hearing all those lies. <laughs> mm. We're lying to ourselves, or either we're listening to the lies of the devil. Mm. And so the devil wants to block our mind from hearing the word of God. That is his, that's one of his tactics in warfare, is I want to block your mind. And I, I want to repeat that someone, the experts, whoever they are, they say that we have about 60, 65,000, 60 or 65,000 thoughts a day and 80% of them are negative. Wow, we are in trouble. And so um, if I listen to the devil or if I listen to myself or if I listen to someone else, um, they might not be giving me the truth. And so that's one way that um, it, you might be struggling in a captivity of that today. But the Lord said, you just, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring every thought into captivity of obedience to Christ. That's, okay. a, that's a good principle for a Christian to remember. Actually, by the way, they also, the experts also say that 35,000 choices we face a day. Wow. 35 choices that we face a day. And we are going to make at least 70 decisions, whether they're good or bad, out of all those choices. So we need the Lord, don't we? Yes, ma'am. And we need to know that the devil is trying to um, get our mind from hearing and believing and obeying the the Word of God. Well, let me just um, turn and read now uh, Romans 7. Uh, this is the great man Paul talking in, um, in verse 22. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He says, I have a new nature and I have an old nature. And the new me loves the law of God. I love the Word of God, the new me. But listen to what he says. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, or the new me, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Mm -hmm. So the new me wants to do, but the old me doesn't want to do. Right. And so um, if I listen to the old me, I will be in captivity, and it's a miserable place to be. I read some, because I have been in captivity. I've been in all three of those captivities for doing sin and for doing right and uh, for God wanting to teach me truths about himself and um, about myself. So Psalm 126, I love that because it says how you feel when you come out of captivity. It says your mouth is filled with laughter, your heart is full of joy. Oh, you just want to praise God. And yes. Then, when God brings you out of captivity. And um, it, so that's a good song song to re, re, remember too. Well, there is one captivity that you want to always be in. And this is found in, in Zechariah 
um, the ninth chapter and the twelfth verse, it says, God says, I want you to be a prisoner of hope. I just want you to always be a prisoner of hope, confident expectation in me that I am who I say I am and that I will do what I say I do. I want to close with this um, illustration. Um, we know reading the scriptures and even history books that um, there was, it was common to have slaves and to sell and buy these slaves. And they were taken to market and um, sometimes a slave would be bought and their master would be such a good master. A master that wanted to do that slave good. And the slave would say, um, Sir, I, I don't want to leave you. I want to stay here with you. I want to be your bond slave. Okay. And that makes me think of the Lord Jesus because we are in the slave market of sin. Mm -hmm. And with his precious blood, he buys us out of that slave market and sin. And then when we really come to know him, we say, Lord Jesus, I, I, do, I want to be your slave. I want to be your bond slave, a slave of, of love to serve you because you are such a good master. Well, in captivity, I hope this will um, bless you and help you to see um, how God works in our hearts. If you don't know Jesus, if you haven't been bought from the slave market of sin, Jesus stands and waits to cleanse you with his blood and cover you with his righteousness. May you ask him today to be your Lord and Savior. Amen. Good words, Miss Ann. Great message from the Word of God. Thank you for sharing that with us. Ladies, we hope that you enjoyed this video as well. If you have any questions or any comments you want to share about today's presentation, then please feel free to message us on Facebook or comment online under the, the YouTube comment section or on the Facebook. We'll pass those messages on to Miss Ann. She's been getting a lot of them lately, and uh, it's very good. It's wonderful, always wonderful to hear from you. In just a moment, we're going to ask Miss Ann to close us in prayer. And... Uh, <coughs> Ladies, if you're interested, if you're, uh, I would want to encourage you to be in a Bible preaching church this Sunday. If you live in the southeast Georgia area near Brantley County, you're always welcome to come and visit us and worship with us at Lulaton Baptist Church. There's information about our ministry in the description box uh, underneath the video. Then we also want to encourage you to come and attend our third annual Bible conference being held September 12th through the 16th, nightly at 6.30 great time of preaching and great worship and everyone is invited to come and attend that as well. Miss Ann, you're going to join us for the Bible conference, right? Bye, Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then ladies, if you need the Lord as your Savior, we certainly encourage you to, to um, contact, us, uh, contact us and call on the name of the Lord. All right, Miss Ann, anything else you want to say? Thank you. All right, if you would close us in prayer, please. Lord, thank you for your word. It is so good, Lord to hear your word and to be set free by your word. Lord Jesus, you are the living word and we know that you work in our heart through your spirit. So will you take this today that was said and may many hearts, Lord, say yes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.